Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to enter the world, a reality where the impossible and the impossible coexist. This you, is the writer's mindscape. Yeah, Tim, uh, you did actually just say that the impossible and the impossible get together. Okay. Your mind has been mindscaped. Yes. Great joke. <laughs> I'm the master of the bad joke around here, okay? This is my podcast. I'll steal that later. Okay. All right. Anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the number one writing podcast. Wait, are we the number one yet? We're, we're back at number one. Okay. We the got num- a ratings boost last week. Oh, uh, awesome. The number one writing podcast at the Zero One Podcast Group. Um, I'm Tim. I'm Adam. Uh, so, just to get you caught up. We're in a world building series. Yes. Uh, the last few episodes, the first two episodes, we're dealing about how to start a world, like where to go and how to build one a little in different ways. Last week's episode was dealing with um, how to deal with uh, stories in an open world. Yes. We're going to be continuing that a little bit more. The last week was more kind of just dealing with continuity. Right. Um, and kind of almost like a solo person in that world where the world has already been fleshed out. Right. Um, now we're actually going to be focused... A solo writer. Yeah, a solo... Though it still kind of applies to what we're going to be talking about today. Oh, an God, open yeah. world in a, with multiple writers. Yes. Um, we will talk... Can link back to continuity a little bit here. Because it does kind of play in it. In, oh, yeah. We're going to be focusing on other things. Um, Adam, this is where I'm going to kind of rely on you a little bit more. Because you have experience with this. <laughs> Doctor Who has had multiple <laughs> different... It's like your producers. Uh, different writers. writers. Every episode is usually written by somebody else. Yep. Um, I mean, you might have one writer that comes in and does a, an arc, but overall it's usually, you know, individual writers per episode. Yeah. So it's, but that, so you're familiar with that. You're also a big comic book fan. What? No. <laughs> uh, I, I only took it because you're wearing an X-Men shirt. I am actually. <laughs> <laughs> um... So, but yeah, you're familiar with how that works, and if anything is a, a good example of an open world that's continually being telling stories in, it's comics. It is really. That's one of the few places where you have a sandbox that you have, I don't know, thirty to fifty writers working in at the, the exact same time. Really, only that many? I thought I, it was a little bit more. No, sometimes it's less. I can't even see that. But I thought there was like maybe like a hundred for some reason. I don't know why. Not, not really. Um. I haven't really been paying attention to how actually how many issue um, different comic books for each company. Well, because has them out. Like, yeah, typically you'll have one writer or a te- a small team of writers. It'll be like two or three people at most working on the same book. Yeah, over a we'll say twelve twenty four arc issue yep. or story, and then they're off that, and they either get moved to another spot or they're you know rehired for the, to continue story telling that story for me one of the best one of my favorite writers mm-hmm. uh, is actually peter david okay uh he did the he's done a major chunk of the hulk stories okay uh writing specifically for the hulk book nice and yeah he's and he's a very accomplished uh solo writer as well nice uh but yeah he's he's brought like he's one of the few guys that brings emotion to a book that's about a monster. Yeah. <laughs> so. Which is cool. Yeah. Um, so let's just dive right into it. Okay. Uh, so when you're doing with an open world and you have multiple writers in there, there's some different ways you can do it. Uh, as we're kind of talking about comics, we'll go with this one. Okay. Um, you have all these writers working at the same time, different stories, the, the, with an overarching arc in there, or mm-hmm. maybe not, but how do you do that? How does that work? How does it work in comics, for the most part? Well, it's done by what's basically called the writer's room. Uh, You'll have a bunch of writers throw out ideas. You come to a collective to go, okay, so this is where we're going with our world from this point A to, say, point D. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, well, we're going to have two other events that we're going to call B and C. Now, how do you work your book into all of this you know this is the cast of characters that we want in these b and c events and then the a event is nearly everyone the d event is nearly everyone so you got to figure out how to get your characters from point a to point d while dealing with b and c okay and that's i mean the problem is sometimes and this happened uh when 
after post Civil War in the comics, okay. not in the movie. Um, yeah. hmm. where Captain America actually wasn't dead, mm-hmm. but his ghost showed up to Thor. Interesting. Yeah. So they just kind of ignored that the ghost ever existed. Interesting. <laughs> they were just like, you know what? We're going to let that go. But it was because it hadn't been explained to that writer that Cap was actually alive. Oh, okay. So he wrote that it was Cap's ghost that came and talked to Thor. And it was just like, oh, <laughs> right, we, we have to figure out how a ghost for a guy that's not actually dead showed up. Interesting. Crap. Okay. So again, stuff like this can happen. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's amazing what they can do. I mean, if you look at like the um the CW Arrowverse, yeah, um, kind of is like a t- television version of that. You have the executive producers, or now one, because I guess one of them was released because of misbehaving. Misbehaving. Uh, yeah. Um, we're just gonna call it misbehaving. Yeah, we're gonna do that because we don't want to go into that stuff. Oh no, no, um, no, we don't. That, but it's all terrible stuff, though. They were the basically the. Executive producers. They were the ones who were saying, here's what we're doing with this one. This is what we're doing with this one. Keeping track of all these different writing right. teams for each show and how they dealt with the crossovers mm-hmm. and all that. They kept the big picture while the each individual, and you kind of see how they fit in together. Right. Which is really uh, um, almost like a, a a glimpse into it in a sense. Yeah. I mean, uh, you also look at the MCU. I mean, Infinity War just happened. Yeah. And it didn't feel for me watching that film did not feel like it was a bunch of different writers just writing scenes. Oh yeah. It felt like there was a story that was very true to every single character. Every character felt like they had been written by the people that had already written them. Yeah. And, but they didn't, but yeah, it was just like, okay, this is it's, it finally felt like a, an event film. Well, I do think I actually read somewhere that James Gunn did write, um, Groot's dialogue or something like Groot's dialogue yeah <laughs> wow really that's tough I or am something... Groot sarcastic I am Groot explaining <laughs> I am Groot whoa <laughs> I am Groot insulting you yeah. know th- I, <laughs> I am Groot sassy <laughs> maybe it was Rocket's dialogue I can't remember that he had something to do with one member of the Guardians I think for that Um, I can't remember exactly but like that was interesting to me. Rocket's going to get that arm. Yeah, he he's is. going to get it. <laughs> he wants that arm. <laughs> it's going to happen. Oh yeah, he's going to get it. Uh, but yeah, that's a great point because like they've been building towards this, and there were a little concerns after Civil War, that, um, Captain America Civil War, that you had so many such a big cast. Yeah, and there were some people who kind of were left out a little bit. But it was, overall, it could have been a lot worse. It's meant to be Captain America's story, so yeah. of course other characters are going to fall off. You know, uh, the first two Avengers films were the team film. Yeah, they didn't truly feel like an event. No, you know, this is the first time that you had everyone mm-hmm. all spread out. Yep. and then coming together, and it never felt like any one person was overshadowed. Yeah. They had their spots. They had their purpose. Yeah. Um. And it was oh, it was done so well. It was very well booked. Um. But yeah. So that's like doing it that way. Um. If you do not have an overarching, um, story that you have to deal with, it makes it a little bit easier because you don't have to fit like. Yeah. I mean, at that point, you're just you're just making sure that you know what you're writing doesn't interfere with the other writers, yeah. or at least it gets mentioned in the that those writers know what you're doing each other and talking to each other. So they know, like, if you're going to reference something, you can reference, oh, this event is happening in New York or wherever this place is. Yeah. You're, you're like, we have a character that lives in New York, but he's never going to admit that that event happened. And you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it was a major event for this other character. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> they opened a portal to hell. Yeah. <laughs> Tuesday. It's New York. It's Things Tuesday. get ignored. It's Tuesday. Yeah. That was a Tuesday. <laughs> um... So that's one of them. The other thing, another way you can do it is just at different times. Yeah. Like, one's taking place in um, this year. One's taking place in the 50s. One's taking place in the... You know, far future. Yeah. One's taking place not even on the planet that has nothing to do and will not affect anything that happens on there. Exactly. Currently. Maybe 10 years from now, that event will actually inspire something that will happen. It but could. We'll worry about that then. <laughs> we'll retcon it when it gets to us. <laughs> exactly. Um, so that's another way you can do it. 
one of the main the main things we have to do is like we said it last week's episode was you got to establish your rules. Yes. And you just got to make sure that they're being followed. Yeah. Clearly, the ghost cap thing, someone didn't follow a rule. Someone dropped the ball on that yeah, one. Yeah, of informing a writer what was going on. <laughs> and it wasn't like in story world, it was people behind the scenes yeah, that's, in development. That's a tell. dropped ball right yeah. there. So, but, but I mean, just, that, that does happen. Yeah. I mean, another example for me of multi-writers writing a single story yeah. uh, is the... Uh, Star Wars Legends series. Interesting. You know, they would have, oh, yeah. they would have, you know, the Young Jedi, uh, Chron- uh, not Chronicles, the Young Jedi, the Jedi Academy series, mm-hmm. where it was four different writers, maybe more, I don't remember, um, but telling an overall story. And each each book did have the flair from that spe- spe- specific. specific writer. Okay. You know, but overall, it didn't. They didn't suddenly write something that was going to completely change everything else. It yeah. wasn't just like you know, one writer's like, you know, it'd be really awesome if everyone died, and they're like, this is supposed to be seven books. And that yep, book this two. is book two. <laughs> Deal with it. You got book three, buddy. <laughs> um, oh come on! <laughs> that's actually something you're seeing in books, um, in like young adult, yeah. and um, more specifically in um, independent readers, yeah. Um, these series where you have a, it's written by each book is written by a different author. Someone came up with this, the idea, pitched it, and then it got the authors. They planned it out so they know what it is. But each person kind of gets their own flair, right? Um, They're like, here's the plot of you, of this part of the story. Yeah, figure out how you want to do it. You know, but here's you, the, here's the got, characters. Just here's the you know here's the plot. Here's your point A to point B. Here's what and the person before you, you flesh it out. Here's what the person before you is gonna be dealing with. Yep. Here's what the person after you is gonna be dealing with. Um, you can you have the the freedom to kind of figure out how you want to do this. Yep. Um, if there's a Bible, a project Bible or something like that, they get that so they know. Um, if there's any information that they want to reveal, they tell them that. Um, so it's getting very popular doing that. Infinity Ring series, I think, is a uh, independent series. It's like oh, cool. 12 books or something like that. I can't remember. Oh, wow. Um, that was a pretty, I guess it was a pretty good series too. Um, what was that like that? Um, so it's just different ways you can do it and it's getting more popular. Um, like I said, you just gotta make sure you establish your rules. Yeah. And part of establishing your rules, you gotta have someone who has the final say. Yes. Um, in TV, that's the executive producer, like on the Arrowverse, the executive producers. Now the only executive producer Yeah. who started with Arrow He's the final say. Yeah. Yes, you have the showrunner, but if the executive producer comes and says no, you're like, ooh, you no. can't do use that character. You can't have that event happen yep. in your show, and because it would affect this thing happening over here. Yep. But I mean, like they're so involved in it. Oh yeah. They know, like, they're like, what do you want to do this season? Okay. Well, you we can't do this, 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 and this, or they'll put the limitations on it, or what they're gonna be doing. Um, they're playing. They're juggling with all these different things of the Arrowverse to keep track of stuff. Yeah. Super uh, Supergirl is a little bit different because it's in, not in the Arrowverse um, universe. It should be at this point. It though. is, but it's, it's universe like thirty two. I know. Um, when will she probably officially never. cross over and stay and then become Power Girl? <laughs> <laughs> Power Girl actually only showed up in the um, Arrowverse. Damn it! Um, actually, she was um, in. Uh, the Legends of Tomorrow, as part because of the part of the uh, not the Justice League, but what's the old the old Justice Society? Yes, she's part of the Justice Society. No, because <laughs> Power Girl is Supergirl from another uh, another reality. Oh, that's cool. Like when she transferred over, she realized that. Uh, sorry to get off on this. One. Oh no, she realized that that there was already a Supergirl there, and she was just like, oh, okay. well, crap. I'm Power Girl. I'm Power Girl. <laughs> Um, and I have a boob window. Ah, okay. That has always weirded me out about her costume. She has a boob window? She has a boob window. And I'm like, <laughs> what 14-year-old boy came up with this? I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, it, there's people who have, someone has a final set. Right. Uh, in the world that we're going to be developing live, starting with our next episode. It's us. It'll be uh, We get the final say. We will establish our rules because we'll actually allow our listeners um, to actually write their own stories when they get them. Right. We will have final say um, with how that thing that will work. Um, 
other things you can talk about? We've already kind of talked about it a little bit, but regions um, and time and time periods yeah. are different times. You can kind of break up multiple writers. I mean, that's that's always a fun thing to play with because you're like, hey, this story takes place in the future. This this story takes place three thousand years in the past. Yep. You know what the this story doesn't. The events of this story have no real consequence on the main yeah. storyline. The other things you can do, ways of doing this, if you have an idea that just absolutely just destroys your rules, yes, you just cannot come up with a solution to it. Uh, just make it an alternate reality, or a bubble story. Yeah, uh, big good ones like in the comics. Uh, on the Age of Apocalypse is one, right? Age of Apocalypse, where it was a uh, history altering uh, or a, a universe altering event happens. Therefore, it's technically in a bubble. Yep. Um, um, House of M. You know, Heroes Reborn was another one. Really? Yeah. I haven't finished that series. Which happens post uh, Onslaught. Oh, okay. Technically, Franklin Richards keeps all of the oh, I'm thinking, sorry. heroes that sacrifice themselves into a bubble. So, yeah, okay, Literally a bubble world. Yeah, ten, you know, when you said Heroes Reborn, I thought of actually the TV show Heroes in the, a few years ago. Heroes Reborn. Oh, I'm like, oh! I was like, wait, that it? I'm like, glad that that didn't work out. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm sad that we don't get any more of that that story. But it was, it was a, uh, first... by season four, it was. Oh yeah, it wasn't it what it? I what I no. what I wanted it to be anymore. The Rhino Strike really did hurt that. Oh series. yeah, it did. Um, though that's just the second season didn't hurt that series. It was way too slow compared to what we were hoping for. Well, that's when the writer strike was. Oh, I know. Was during the, second season. Yeah, but the thing is, it, but the season started out for heroes oh, slow. Yeah. Oh yeah. And we wanted fast, and that's what kind of hurt it. And then the strike just tr- destroyed their plans. And then the second half of season two was actually the first half of season three. Yep. Which caused. All kinds of confusing because then there was a completely different storyline that started the second half of season three. Oh, I know. I was like, eh, oh, yeah. they lost was... me. And then season four shows up and I was like, I- I'm not watching it anymore. It actually got better from what I understand. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, but it was a little bit better, but it, in the end it wasn't as, yeah. it, you lost your fans. Yeah. So, but those are the ways you can also just kind of have multiple writers in there um, for that. And But it really comes down to organization communication with your other pe- authors yes. um, communication and keeping that if especially if you want a continu- a good kind of continuity right um you can have it you will get plot holes it's not something you can avoid well, when you have this kind of stuff once again i got to say plot holes can be your friend yeah. Now, if you have only two or three people writing in the world it's a lot easier to keep that a little bit more maybe. yeah you're just like oh we totally that's a plot hole okay and it's like well we can either say that you know that that object just randomly showed up and it helped the day and ignore why it just randomly showed up yep. or we can you know that's a try to retcon and explain why it was there or we can tell a different story later on that explains how it happened exactly somewhere else in the world yeah that is why it just happened to show up at the right time time travel people time, time travel time, <laughs> time travel fixes everything <laughs> and, and co- screws everything, everything up. up yep uh, so, but that's the thing. It's just really kind of figuring that, that stuff out. Um, just knowing what you want to do. Um, yeah. you will have those plot holes, but plot holes are there for good. I mean, you think about reality. We don't know a lot of stuff. <laughs> stuff randomly happens. Exam, exam, the, one of the best examples in science is we know of four fundamental f- forces of the universe. We've united three of them together. Somehow, we, for whatever reason, we cannot link gravity into them. But it is an, uh, one of the fundamental forces. Yeah. We don't know why we can't do that yet. We won't know. We Probably in our lifetime, we won't know. There will be a, a discovery eventually that figures it out. And there's actually, some people are actually saying, predicting that there's actually a fifth fundamental force. Dark matter. Fate. No, the one saying, above all. There you go, <laughs> Stanley. Stanley is a, is a fifth. Oh uh, no, but they're actually saying that um, yeah. dark matter might be an actual fundamental force. It could be, which is interesting. But we're not going to dive in there. But that just kind of gives you an idea of what there. So having these plot holes, while it's nice to not have them, yep, it actually kind of makes your world a little bit better. Yeah, if they're good. Yeah, bad plot holes are bad. Don't do them. Think through your stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
You have anything else for that? Uh, my only last piece: is don't go into lazy, lazy writing. Yeah, the main thing you is, you know, if you if you discover that you got a plot hole and you can't figure out how to get yourself out of it, don't put it there. Uh, or just talk to see, ask someone else to see how yeah. ways that you can make, they can see a solution. Yeah. Um, but if you can't come up with a solution, don't do it. Yeah, just because, let it go. Because you may at some point get a solution. Yeah, you may not. Don't don't rely on MacGuffins either. No, 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 no. But that's all we have for you this week. Um, make sure you subscribe, smash that al- alerts so you know when we post because YouTube will not always tell you exactly. Um, comment down your thoughts on how you would maybe think about handling a multiple war- open world with multiple writers. Yeah. Your thoughts on this? Anything you think we missed for- or better examples? Yeah. Who knows? Um, down there. Um, and. Check us out next week, because next week is when we will actually start developing our open world, people. Yes, we'll it's be, gonna be awesome. Yes, and we will eventually. We will really reveal our rules for writing in it eventually. Yeah, but we'll get that to later. But we will just want you to know it's coming. Yes, it is. So have a good night. See ya.